Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and talk about what's happening in the news. Um, so I'm going to get just right into it. So this is according to CNN. I saw this um, on the internet, and I did not, I did not, I did not watch the video. I have no plans on watching the video. Um, however, based off of the things that I've read, um, for me, I have a clear understanding of what happened. I don't think I need to watch the video um, for me to see what happened, um, to see who was in the wrong. Okay. So, again, this is according to CNN.com. Um, Illinois woman uh, released body cam. I mean, I'm sorry, Illinois police. I don't know where I got woman from. Um, Illinois police released body cam footage of fatal shooting of black woman in her home. Um, body camera footage showing the fatal police shooting of Sonia Macy, um, a 36-year-old black woman who had called 911 for help, was released Monday in a case that has led to unaliving charges against a deputy. Um, the 36-minute video released via the Illinois State Police includes body cam footage body camera footage from each um, of the two sheriff's deputies who responded to Macy's house after midnight on July the 6th, after um, Macy called 911. Is it Macy or Massey? I think it's Macy. Um, called 911 to report a possible prowler at her home in Springfield, according to a court document filed by prosecutors. In the footage, Deputy Sean Grayson, and I'm not playing the footage, but I will put the link. If you want to watch the video, I'll put the link so you can watch away um, in the description box um, if you want to watch the video. In the footage, um, Deputy Sean Grayson at, and another deputy uh, speak calmly with Macy in her home when she goes to the stove to turn off a pot of boiling water. She then picks up the pot and the other deputy steps back. Away from your hot steaming water, he says. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, she says in response. Huh? The deputy says. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, she repeats. You better effing not, or I swear to God I'll effing shoot you in the effing face, Grayson says. He then draws his firearm and points it at her, and she ducks and says, I'm sorry, while lifting the pot, the video shows. Drop the effing pot, both deputies yell. Three shots are heard. After a few seconds of silence, one deputy sh says, shots fired and calls for emergency medical services. Dude, I'm not taking effing boiling water to the effing head. And look, it came right to our feet too, Grayson says. Minutes after the shooting, Grayson speaks to another law enforcement figure. She had boiling water and came at me with boiling water, he says in the video. She said she was going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came at me with boiling water. The release of the video comes about two weeks after the fatal shooting and just days after Grayson was charged in her death. Grayson, 30, was indicted by a grand jury last week on three counts of first degree the M word, unaliving, and one count each of aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct. He has entered a plea of not guilty and was denied pretrial release according to court documents. Macy is one of the number of Black women who have been, un have been unalived by police in their own homes in recent years, including Breonna Taylor, and I am going to destroy this woman's name. I'm just going to call her Miss Jefferson A. T-A-T-I-A-N-A -A -A, Jefferson in a news conference Monday morning. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump, who represents Macy's family, uh, connected her death to other cases of police violence against Black people across the U.S. Until we get justice for Sonia Macy, we rebu rebuke the discriminatory criminal justice system in the name of Jesus, he said. Um, video shows lead up and aftermath. Uh, Grayson did not activate his body camera until after he fatally shot Macy, according to charging documents. The other de deputy had activated his body camera when he first arrived at the scene, the documents state. 
According to footage from the other deputy's body camera, the incident began with the deputy, deputies walking around Macy's yard and finding a vehicle with broken windows. They then, they then knock on the door and speak with her, and she struggles to understand and answer some questions about the vehicle and about herself. As they speak in the, her living room, the deputies note that the pot is on the lit stove, and one says, we don't need a fire while we're here. Macy gets up and turns off the stove, and then the shooting follows. Immediately after the shooting, the video records Grayson telling his partner Macy would not need medical help. The other deputy says he's not, I'm sorry, the other deputy says he's going to get a medical kit to help. But Grayson responds, nah, she's done. You can just go get it, but that's a headshot. Grayson later goes to his vehicle um, to get his own medical supplies. When he gets back to the house, he asks if there's anything he can do, but he is told no. All right, I'm not even going to waste my med stuff then, Grayson says. Next, Grayson leaves the house and speaks to a group of law enforcement officers outside. Yeah, I'm good. This effing bee is crazy, he says, according to the footage. In the news conference Monday, along with members of her family, Crump said Macy had mental health challenges but was not aggressive toward the deputies. Girl, they said in some of the videos that even the officers that arrived on the scene were just like in disbelief. Um, she needed a helping hand, she said. She didn't need a bullet to the face. Listen, I'll put the rest. This is a long article. I'll put the... Um, I'll put the link to the article in the description box. Hold on, let me say this. Let me finish this part. Since the shooting, local and state officials have criticized the deputy's actions as unjustified use of deadly force. Um, a review of the Illinois State Police investigation into the shooting does not support a finding that Grayson was justified in his use of deadly force. The state's attorney for the county, John Malicer, said in July in a July 17th news report. Let me just say this. I remember when they first started saying defund the police. When I first heard the words defund the police, I was like, oh, they're trying to get rid of the police departments. And then I found out, no, 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 no. That's not what it is. So they're basically, those who want to defund the police want to reallocate those funds that are going to the police departments and put them down other avenues. So, an example that I could probably give, in this case, you have someone who they have said has mental health challenges. I know everybody thinks differently. If I were a cop and I arrived on the scene of someone who says that her home could be possibly being broken into. And out of the blue, she starts to say, I rebuke you in the, rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Even when I was reading this article and other articles, before I even found out that she had mental health issues, my mind went to, does she have mental health issues? So in those cases, if you defund the police and reallocate those funds to people who could come into those situations and de-escalate those situations and the end result not be death, then that should be the goal. Because the truth is, these police officers are not trained to deal with people who may be having an episode, 
may have mental health issues. So in this case, if they feel as though this person may be going through something in the moment, they then, I would assume, could make a phone call to someone who could come in and fix the situation before it gets to a point that someone is dead. Because we know that cops, especially those white ones, don't really value black lives. So, because they see no value in black lives, it's easier for them to just eliminate the target. There should have been no reason why this woman should have died over boiling water. You really shot this woman because you thought that she was going to throw some water on you. As if there wouldn't be enough time for you to kind of move out of the way, you might get hit with a little splash, maybe. But it still should not be death anywhere in this story, even if she did throw the water at you. But this is what happens. And I don't want to politicize this woman's death because that's not what this is about. But we have to be honest. We had this conversation probably like a month or two ago. And some of y'all homeboy, Donald Trump, has already said Matter of fact, I'm going to play. I'm going to play what he said. Let me get the audio ready. So here's the audio of Donald Trump saying that he's going to make sure that these cops have immunity from prosecution. So why y'all like her so busy trying to vote for Donald Trump when they walk into your house and shoot you because you a nigga? We're going to rebuild our cities and become a beacon of hope safety beauty better than ever before we're going to rebuild our cities we're going to work with democrat mayors who are running in every instance running them democrat mayors and many democrat governors and we're going to rebuild our cities we're going to bring them back like they used to be we're going to make them safe places again we're going to give our police their power back and we're going to give them immunity from prosecution we're going to give the police their power back when has the power ever been stripped away from them on top of the freedom that they already have to walk around town and shoot who they want and more than likely not go to jail. So they're not prosecuted for doing their job. We'll take over the horribly run capital of our country, Washington, D.C., and clean up, renovate, and rebuild our capital city so that it's no longer a nightmare of murder and crime, but rather it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our... Y'all hear him? Let me replay that part. But y'all don't want to listen to me because I have come down here. It's no shade. I remember when they first started that bullshit down in Florida. And I remember them not wanting LGBTQ to be taught in school. As if LGBTQ folk have not been a major contribution to history. But they don't want anything LGBTQ taught in school. And it's, girl, it is shade. All y'all niggas, whites, Hispanics, girl, be in the comment section talking about hip, hip, hop, 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 hooray, right? 
We don't need that gay stuff taught in school. And then all of a sudden, I was down here. I was like, okay, you know when they come for us, they coming for y'all, right? Y'all think that y'all, y'all think that y'all not gonna get it either? You think that y'all are safe? And then slowly but surely, it's oh, we can't teach critical race theory. Oh, we can't talk about slavery. Now everybody want a girl stand up and go march. But girl, when it was coming for the other black people who might happen to be LGBTQ, you didn't give a damn. But now that it came out that y'all uteruses, they're trying to whitewash history. They're trying to give these cops immunity from prosecution. Now y'all want to open y'all eyes three, four years down the road. Y'all ain't going to be happy until we in some cotton field again singing Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya, Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya, amazing grace. Picking cotton and sweating. Pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. I will fully uphold our under siege Second Amendment. It is under siege, like never before. We will protect innocent life and we will restore free speech rapidly. And I will do something that's very important to me, maybe more important to me than any other person in the world. I will secure our elections because you know what happened in 2020. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots, proof of citizenship and voter ID. I hope Sonya's family is doing the best that they can considering the circumstances. I saw a picture of her with a little boy. I don't know if that was a niece. I mean, a niece. I don't know if that was a nephew, um, a godson, her son. I'm assuming it was her son. Um, I just think it's a fucked up situation. That lady shouldn't have died. Y'all really killed that lady over boiling water when this all really could have been rectified. But again, you have cops who are already trained to just shoot to kill, especially when you. So that's the only thing that's that's in there that's on their mind. Oh, my life was in danger. Girl, your life wasn't in danger over no fucking hot water, girl. Stop. And so you decide to pull a bullet to somebody's head. When when the truth of the matter is. If you have someone talking about rebuking the name of Jesus, it doesn't take. I'm, I, I don't want to. I'm not saying you can't call on, on, on. I'm not saying you can't call on the Lord, baby. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you can't call on Jesus. OK, he's the on time God. Yes, he is. But in my head, if I come into a situation and I hear you talking about rebuking the name of Jesus, I would be like, uh, OK. But because, girl. Again, these cops are not trained to deal with situations like these. That's why you need people who are experts, therapists, doctors, who could de-escalate the situation, and the end result is still somebody living to see the next day. Anyways, we're going to move on. I don't want to make this too, I mean, I know it, you know, but you know, we had to talk about it. So, all right, y'all, let's um, move on to something a little lighter. All right. So, Madonna's son, who wants to cosplay as he's poor, girl, I want to give, give a shout out to Cousin Yaya. He said something in the comment section that made a light bulb go off. 
And he basically said, because I was talking about people being born into wealth and, you know, if, if it were me, I would have loved to, let me just say something before we get into David. <laughs> no, we just talking. I would love to have been born into a family where money would never be an issue. Um, there were already things laid out in place for me, right? You could say what you want to say about Kim Kardashian. You can say what you want to say about Northwest <laughs> and her talents or lack of. <laughs> But what you cannot say is that Kim is already trying to line something in place for North. And I'm sure the other children too, whether it's oh North coming out with a skincare line. I think I read something about North coming out with a skincare line in some years. North, you know, she was, <laughs> she was in the Lion King play. Now between me and you, you know, I don't like to talk about the kids, but I'm going to go ahead and just have some kitchen table talk. I've been wanting to say this, but I ain't saying it. North they have no business having our ass in that play. <laughs> okay, now I'm all down for nepotism. Okay, black people, y'all need to start participating in nepotism if we're going to be honest about it. I'm all down for nepotism, but I'm also down for making sure that if you participate in nepotism, girl, you're just not throwing somebody like on, on stage like that. And girl, quiet as it's kept, North they have no business in that play. North got that North got that job because of who her mama and her daddy is. Full stop. Okay? But I'm not mad at the fact that Kim is already trying to lay the foundation to make sure that North is successful. That North already has a plan. Now whether or not, now whether or not North decides to go with the plan, she may get older and say, I don't want to do this, right? But we can't say that there's not a plan in place for North to be successful. Blue Ivy. Girl, we look up, Blue Ivy might be one of the top choreographers in the world. Girl, she already performing in, in front of millions and millions of people. You see what I'm saying? Now, that doesn't mean that, did I say, did I say North or Blue Ivy? I mean Blue Ivy. Blue Ivy. Blue might grow up and be the top choreographer of the, uh, you know, girl, the next Fatima Robinson. Right? Because she's doing something that she seems to enjoy and she may realize, oh, I actually like to perform. I actually like to dance, right? You just never know. Now, again, these kids can get older and say, I don't want to do that. That was just something I did at the time. But I would rather be born in that type of family where there is money and wealth and some type of foundation already set to be born, to be born poor, <laughs> period. So when I hear the story of David, right, <laughs> girl, like cousin Yaya said, you was plucked out of an orphanage. We're going to call a thing a thing. I'm not trying to sound mean. I'm really not. But David, and I, I don't know how I forgot all about this, because you know those black kids are not biologically Madonna's, okay? <laughs> so, Madonna went through the process of adopting David Girl, you were literally given the golden ticket for a better life. But for whatever reason, you are choosing to play this game of, oh, I want to be poor and live in the Bronx. Not to say the Bronx is a bad area. I don't know anything about New York City, right? But I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I ain't never heard nobody rich just saying I stay in the Bronx. <laughs> Girl, if I, I heard them say they might stay in Harlem, downtown, Soho, Tribeca. But I ain't never heard none of the girls who coming from money like Madonna. <laughs> Girl, talking about we living in the Bronx. So, girl, you want to play this game. You think that it's cute to be hungry at 9 o'clock at night. Remember he said that? Let me go to the, um, let me go to what he said. <laughs> Hold up. Let me, let me go to it. No, I wanna, let me see. Hold up. So this is what he wrote. It's lovely to experience being, being at, I'm sorry. It's lovely to experience it being nine o'clock at night, me being hungry and realizing I don't have enough money to get food and scavenging, Banda said. It's fun to be young. He continued, I love it. I'm not, I'm not on my own. I've got my girlfriend. So basically he said, girl, let me tell you something. And it's shit like that. Girl, David, if you want to pretend that you're poor, girl, just go ahead and do it. But nobody who's poor wants to be poor. Nobody who's poor 
wants to be poor. Nobody is sitting around their home at nine o'clock at night, stomach touching a back, talking about girl, <laughs> girl, it's lovely to experience. It's lovely to experience my stomach touching my back. It's lovely to experience my stomach growling. Girl, it's lovely to experience, girl, not having enough money for food and having to scavenge. Girl, what? But girl, you want to be down so bad. Girl, you want to be so you want to be down so bad and so relatable. Girl, you sound dumb. I'm sorry. Nobody wants to be poor. People might want to be hood. People might want to be might might want people to think that they girl still got some street cred, but don't nobody want to be poor. So he had to come back and say, oh, I'm good, blah, 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 blah. Because you sound ignorant, quiet as it's kept. You do. You sound stupid. You sound stupid. You sound stupid. Girl, your mama is worth probably a billion dollars now after that last tour. And you want to play these games of living in the Bronx with your girlfriend, girl struggling for food, talking about you hungry. Girl, to prove what to who? Bitch, your mama that gave you the Willy Wonka cho chocolate factory golden ticket when she came and snatched your ass about that orphanage. And girl, you want to play these goddamn games like you poor. If you don't shut your ass up, go back over there to your mama's million dollar house or tell your mama to put you in some nice high rides in Tribeca and shut up, girl. And another thing I want to say is this too. <laughs> we just talking. Another thing I want to say, I want to say is I want people to stop thinking that People who come from money are these kids who grow up in wealth. They're automatically um, designed to be, to be brats. That's not true. There are more people in the world that are poor than rich. There are more people in the world that are considered middle class than rich. And I know a lot of ignorant people who were kids who grew up to be grown and they were brats. They still feel entitled. They still feel like the world owes them something. So this whole thing of thinking that just because people come from money, that means that they're automatically going to be a brat. No. So what's, what's the excuse for the people who are poor? And they were brats as kids or felt entitled. You see what I'm saying? If you come from money, if you, if you have kids, girl, teach your kids that, yes, you by way of me have been put in a position where financially you'll never have to worry about a dollar right you might have to budget but for the most part you can spend as you want to madonna kids will probably never ever have to worry about money the west kids kardashian kids will probably never have to worry about money the carter knows kids will never have to worry about money right so that's when you step in and try and teach your kids that even though you are not like most people as far as financially in the position that you're in. You still, pe you still treat people with kindness and respect. And you don't disrespect people. I think that you are better than because I got some money that you done came into. <laughs> okay, that's how you say that. That's what y'all need to be worried about focusing on telling y'all rich, y'all, if you come from money and your, kid, and, and your kids, not, to, not for your kids to think that, oh, I need to be poor in order to feel relatable or people thinking that, oh, if you're rich, you don't want to spoil your kids because they can grow up to be brats because the poor people, they swore up and now they spoil their kids, right? They grew up to be brats. What about the people who were poor and didn't spoil their kids and they still grew up to be assholes and bitches? So it ain't just because you come from money. <laughs> like I said, most people, there are more poor people and middle class people in the world than there are rich. <laughs> Anyways, I had to get that off my chest. Let's move on. Listen, I wasn't there. So I don't know what happened. Okay. Chris Brown sued for $50 million over, over alleged involvement in a brawl accused of brutally beating men with his entourage following concert. So Chris Brown has found himself at the center of a physical dispute allegation once again. On Monday, Ju July the 22nd, attorney Tony Busby took to Instagram and revealed his firm filed a lawsuit against Chris Brown on behalf of four men claiming the celeb and, a celeb and his crew brutally attacked them over the weekend. In a shared statement, the legal professional said um, one, I'm sorry, on Saturday night in Fort Worth, 
uh, entertainer Chris Brown, along with his entourage, attacked and brutally beat several men who had just attended his concert. Multiple police reports have been made. At least one of the men uh, beaten remains hospitalized. Uh, touching on Chris Brown's controvers controversial past, um, the statement continued, um, Chris Brown has a long history of violence. He has been arrested and accused of assault on at least 10 occasions. Enough, the Busby fall, uh, law firm filed suit this morning on behalf of the four men brutalized his, um, last weekend in the hope of obtaining justice for these victims and putting an end once and for all to Chris Brown's intolerable and thuggish behavior. Um, according to documents obtained by TMZ, Yalo Beezy, Cinco, CJ, and Live Nation are also named in the suit. The alleged victims, Larry Parker, Joseph Lewis, Charles Bush, and Demarcus Powell, are seeking $50 million in restraining orders against their alleged attackers. The men said things went south as they were preparing to leave the backstage area. Reportedly, while Bush dapped up Chris, someone from the No Air Singers crew reminded him of their ongoing drama. It's alleged that Chris then ordered his crew to attack Bush and his friends. Now, let me tell y'all something. Y'all know I'm not the one, baby. Some of y'all are about to be shocked at what I'm about to say. Girl, because I'm not the one. But girl, all I have to say is this. I think that Chris Brown is a menace. I do. Everybody ain't lying on Chris Brown. I think there are certain people out there who continue to be um, a menace to society because they're never held accountable for their actions. And they know that there are people out there who will run to their defense. How and ever. <sighs> if Y'all knew that y'all had some type of beef with Chris Brown. Then why are y'all at that man's concert? Why are y'all making y'all way backstage? I'm not saying that it's right y'all got y'all ass whooped, but I live in the real world. <laughs> and if I knew I was beefing with someone or had prior beef with someone who is not probably wrapped too tight. I don't think I would want to be anywhere in the vicinity. And I would not make it my business to go to pay for to see this person perform and try and get my ass backstage. I don't want to sound like I'm saying they provoke Chris Brown and his crew, but what I am saying is if they knew there was some beef there, then why were you even in the building? I know some of y'all might be like, girl, did he just say this? I just said it. <laughs> I could see if y'all was walking down the street, girl, if y'all was at the dollar store, if y'all was at Walmart, if y'all was at the mall, and y'all was both coming out the Gucci store, y'all walking out, Chris Brown walking in, and they know that y'all and beat y'all ass, then I would be like, oh, girl. <laughs> but girl, y'all, it's almost like y'all went looking for trouble. All right, <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs> girl, bye y'all. I feel like, girl, I feel like some of y'all about to throw tomatoes at my head, but I feel like some of y'all, you being honest, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Girl, I'm a truth teller. <laughs> if I ain't gonna do nothing else, bitch, I'm gonna tell the truth, <laughs> okay? <laughs> whether you get on my nerves, whether I like you or not, the truth is the truth, <laughs> okay? Anyways, all right, I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good night. Bye, y'all.